Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me <laughs> Bore You to Sleep. I, for- I forgot what I was doing for a minute. That's it. Uh, yeah, Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Um, Please only listen to this recording when you can safely close your eyes as this session that is specifically made to help you to sleep may cause sleepiness. And to be fair, some of you that are listening to this may actually feel tired anyway. Because there's this whole Oh I didn't fart then by the way when I went oh I just uh I sometimes feel like I'm preparing for old age. Sometimes I sit back in a chair and I go, ah, but actually I don't really mean it. There is no like relief or physical relief, but it's as if I'm preparing for it. You know, so when I get older and I sit down in a chair and I, oh, it's nice. I sometimes do it when I'm in a bath. Lay down in the bath. I go, oh, that's nice. But actually, it's all right. It's okay. But it wouldn't sound the same, would it? You know, laying down in the bath, going, oh, that's adequate. Yeah, that's kind of the same as it normally is. Oh, yeah. Takes you, kind of takes you erotic, <laughs> eroticism out of it. <laughs> eroticism. I'm just pleased that I could say the word, eroticism. So, what am I going to talk about today? Well, I'd like to thank. quite a few of you actually um, for I've got an itchy armpit wait a sec oh. do you ever ever scratch your armpit and then give it give your fingers a little sniff if you don't neither do I and um, so I'd like to thank a few people you kind of know who you are. So people that I've had recent communications with via Facebook, uh, either talking to, uh, you know, directly or maybe a late night uh, Facebook chat, you know, sort of uh, texting or voice, whatever. Um and I feel quite supported with my growing venture or I don't know if you want to call it a growing venture but this you know the let me bore you to sleep recordings of uh, are going from strength to strength and you know, I'd like to thank those individual people that I've spoken to over the last week as well as everybody that listens now I haven't done a recording for a few days because I've been focusing on building the website the Let Me Bore You To Sleep website so I've been putting quite a lot of time into that 
originally it was a Podbean podcast. Then I changed. Well, I didn't change, but the I changed my mind. Um, and decided the reason for it is this. I had advertising on the podcast but only at the very beginning and not on all of the tracks probably about 38% of listens actually get uh, have adverts at the beginning but those adverts in time will hopefully cover the costs of running this free service and even further in time will maybe even allow me to earn a living doing this which I think I deserve to be fair I've been doing it for a long time so I think uh, it'd be nice it's that whole old saying isn't it if you can was it if you can earn a living doing something you love then you'll be happy it's kind of obvious really isn't it I suppose but if you can earn a yeah I'll know what it is if you can earn a living doing what you love then you never have to work a day in your life well I suppose I mean I do work I don't work I don't officially work but I do put quite a lot of energy into it's not just the recordings but it's the the back end of things if that that sounds a bit strange it's the the stuff that you don't see the you know the, the website stuff the promotion the you know and different bits and also learning different ways to to do what I do as well you know the the learning never ends you know it's uh, you have to have ingoing in order to have outgoing so in order for me to talk I need to have stuff going into my brain as well although if you listen to some of these sessions you might think well uh, you know you might really think oh I don't know where that came from so it's fine but there's different types of issues with sleeping and I've beginning to learn a bit more of those from what you have told me and some of the just over the years you know conversations I've had and it's not always about being wide awake when you want to sleep Sometimes it's it's about you're really tired, but actually, maybe physically, the people uh, that have chronic pain or you know physical issues that may have in the past got in the way of allowing you to sleep easily and naturally. And what I can offer is sort of an opportunity to have more of that by relaxing your mind, maybe by distraction, by offering a few positive suggestions along the way. Um, It's a mixture of different things. And... I was speaking to someone the other day, the other night actually, but I think it was daytime for her, although it might have been nighttime. No, she was in Ghana, 
and now she knows exactly who she is if she's listening and we're talking about sort of using the idea of using hypnosis and this kind of stuff to help heal the body uh, like physiologically anatomically healing the body and I've been giving it some thought uh, I've also been watching the Santa Clarita diet on Netflix as well so I've not given it my whole attention but I've been giving it some thought and Andre's running around now well done Andre yeah that's great just jump, jump all over me that's it that's it that's it he wants his dinner but I told him he can't have his dinner until I've done this recording but he's not taking it he's not having it he said no you get my dinner right now and I said but Andre please let me do the recording he said no get me my dinner and I said oi oi you've overstepped the mark mate he said what do you mean overstepped the mark I'm hungry I said yeah but now I'm becoming angry it's a very similar word but very different emotions and he said I do know what the word means. Why are you talking down to me like that? And I said, I'm not talking down to you. He said, yes, you are. I said, well, I didn't mean to. He said, well, I forgive you. I said, oh, good, thanks. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean you forgive me? He said, ha ha, caught you out there. Distracted you what yeah so I was being naughty talking back to you and then it turned out that you apologised <laughs> Andre you have to wait until I finish before you have your dinner yes you will and he's just there I'm just holding him and he's, on, he's basically just laying back in my hand and he's just looking at me licking his lips as if you know just he's he's literally staring at me which is very weird <laughs> to have it he's literally right now he's staring at me what are you staring at go on go on go and get off Go and, oh, you want to lay down on my lap, okay. He thinks if he just, I think he thinks if I can see him, eventually I'll get him his dinner. As if I've forgotten about him, but I've not forgotten about him. I'm just choosing not to feed him. And not, not forever, just until I finish this. It's fair enough. I think and I've got this idea I had this idea years and years and years ago probably back in uh, I don't know 1999 probably so yeah, probably about 20 years maybe more maybe 21 years maybe 98 but probably 99 2000 ish I had this idea of making a recording like a daily recording that could people could listen to online that would kind of cover everything that if you listen every day then whatever the issue is that you may have, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, whether it's pain, whether it's 
uh, you know, phobias, whatever the thing might be, that by listening to me, to my voice every day, things start to kind of come together, maybe unravel, and those things, uh, let's say a phobia for example, it seems like a knot in your mind and you kind of can't quite get to it. It just seems to kind of become undone. So it's no longer there. Things that used to bother you, for some reason, don't bother you anymore. You're able to be more relaxed. At times that perhaps you could never even imagined being more relaxed. Able to sleep easier. You know, just those things it can improve every aspect of your life relationships family work your health even your decision making can be affected positively so I just that's something that I like the idea of doing and I think that maybe this could be that thing in its own way. Because when you're listening to me yabbering on about nothing, sometimes, your mind is focusing here, focusing on my voice, maybe focusing on, perhaps you can hear the birds in the background, or when you hear Andre running around, maybe you hear my big black squeaky chair, or you hear me scratching myself. And there's something, maybe, you know, there's the repetition, I suppose, but of doing the same thing, maybe hearing the same person, even though every recording is different, there's going to be similarities in a sense of it's, it's me, it's my voice. It's also depending on how you think about things and what your belief systems are and all that stuff the thing is you're listening to this at the same time as somebody else so basically every pretty much every minute of every day someone in the world is listening to me talking whether it's these recordings or it's other recordings but you know statistically based on the stats there's always going to be someone listening somewhere in the world and very likely they're listening at the same time that you are maybe even to this and that energy, that connection, it means that you're connected to other people, which we all are anyway. We're all connected. So I quite like that idea. I quite like the idea of the, the energy sort of, you know, growing and sort of the healing energy because it's a positive energy. And it kind of spreads. And 
and grows. And sometimes, you know, all you need is a break, a rest, a change, a little bit of distance away from your day-to-day life. And you can gain that by spending an hour with me each day, just talking, listening. And that's a good thing about this. The good thing is you don't have to do anything. And I like that. I like not having to do anything. As soon as someone tells me I have to do something, mm, I kind of don't don't have as much interest. It's not that I'm lazy. I'm just, I'm very fussy about what I waste my time doing. Or spend my time, spend my time doing. And, which is why I like to spend my time doing this. Because I get to spend time with you thank you Andre for deciding to play with your plastic carrier bag in fact he's not playing with it he's actually sleeping in it now you know in the summer it's totally true in the summer he will go to sleep inside a carrier bag and I go to take him out maybe you know maybe it's just dinner time or I just want to cuddle with him maybe or I've got to take him to put him into bed and he's completely there's condensation all inside the carrier bag from him and he stinks <laughs> absolutely stinks of the because he doesn't really sweat himself he's got I don't know quite how it works but he doesn't because he's got he's wearing a fur coat isn't he Um, it is a real fur coat I'm afraid so if you do meet him please don't chuck paint over him it's not his fault but he um Hey, the smell of the bag, of the condensation of his heat on the bag, makes him all stinky. Just for a while. But I can't believe, why would he want to be in something so hot? It must be like a sauna. Which brings me to my next subject. Saunas. I went to the gym today. And I woke up at about... What time did I wake up, Andre? What time did I wake up? I went to bed quite late. So it was about six o'clock before I went to sleep because I was working on the website all night and I managed to wake up I think it was just before one o'clock half past twelve one o'clock and I thought oh it's too late to Andre it's too late to go to the gym now but then I remembered that it's not 
because I wasn't really thinking straight. So what I did is I had my breakfast. I really need to put him in his cage sometimes. It winds me up. I um, had my breakfast, had a cup of coffee, and I watched a a little bit of telly. And then I got ready, let Andre out of his cage, because he sleeps in the cage at night, or when I'm in bed, rather. Only because otherwise it would disturb me. And then I caught the bus. I didn't catch the bus. I, I walked to the bus stop and waited for the bus to arrive. And I was running down the road with a big bus shaped net. I'm trying to catch the bus. So I st- stood there. There was someone else there already at the bus stop. So I waited. I didn't. So I didn't wait with him. I didn't stand directly next to the man that was waiting. Um, didn't sort of lean against him or anything. So I kind of, you know, I lent. I did lean against a post though. There's a post there. It's a, well, it's a, a lamp post. And. I quite like leaning against it. So I decided to lean against it. This, you know, today. It's sort of, it's a mixture of... I quite like rubbing my back against it. It feels quite nice. And... It just just feels right. It feels just like it's there for that reason uh, but I don't do it if it's wet I, if it's been raining what I do is I touch it first and if it's wet then I don't lean against it but if it's dry and it's been raining but it's dry I will lean against it but sometimes I'll lean against it and not test it first because I didn't realise that it had been raining earlier and then it's wet I don't always notice it straight away I think what happened once is I was leaning against it and then um, I think I might have oh yeah I think I might have had Andre with me or Oh no, I think I probably had my phone and I made a phone call and as I was making a phone call with my telephone in one hand and I think I leant against the lamppost with my other hand and then I thought, oh, it's wet. I uh, better not better not lean against it so I didn't but I don't always remember to do that but then I'm sure there's probably some times when I've I've leant against it and it's been wet but I didn't realise it was wet because I've got you know clothes on underneath my jacket I don't go out with my winter coat on with just being naked underneath because it's illegal and uh, yeah that's, that's, well it's not just because it's illegal it's, it'd be cold I wouldn't want to do that um, although sometimes I walk up to the shops with my winter jacket on and when I get back, I'm sweating. Even though it's really windy and maybe even cold outside, but inside, it's it's like a different temperature inside the coat. It's 
very strange. It's kind of like a cake. You know a cake that has like a hard shell, but inside it's all fluffy. I'm trying to think of something like that. A donut maybe. Donut can be quite like that. I mean, they're not necessarily hard on the outside, apart from the ones that have icing on. You can get, can you get donuts with icing? I think you can, can't you? The thing is, in England, we don't really, don't really do donuts. I mean, we do 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 donuts. Do, do, we do 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 donuts, but not um, don't really have like shops that just sell donuts. Although we do have shop shops that just sell donuts, probably in London or you know, sort of the cities, but. I've been around a little bit and I've not seen that many places that sell donuts other than maybe bakeries and supermarkets of which every town has a few so I suppose you can get donuts in every town really easily but I'm not talking about the ease of getting donuts I suppose I'm talking more about the specialisation of selling such a product uh, as a donut. Uh, you know, like lots of different styles of donut and, you know, icing and uh, cream and jam and flat ones and busty ones and, I don't know, various different whiplash ones, I don't know, uh, kinky ones, ones shaped like bicycles, who knows, they just, the thing is, if you ever do go into a donut shop, when you do buy a donut, and you think, oh it's quite a lot of money, just remember that probably 60% probably of that donut cost goes towards the rent because donuts are really cheap to make really cheap it's so e really easy to make as well I used to make donuts I'm not an expert, but I used to make them when I was a kid. Not not in my bedroom or anything. I used to work in a bakery when I was 14, 15, something like that. 13. And I'd work in a bakery on a Saturday and Sunday morning, and then during the holidays I'd work every day of the week. And I get paid like 75 pence an hour, something like that. But I get paid daily, which still meant I was getting paid rubbish money. But and I'd start on a Saturday. What did I start? I think it was seven. I think it was seven o'clock on a Saturday, but it might have been six. And on a Sunday, it was an hour earlier. So it might have been five on a Sunday. And it was till about midday. So we'd work for six hours, maybe seven hours on a Sunday. And in some ways, it was among the best jobs I ever had because the bloke in charge to the boss was brilliant 
was such a lovely bloke, really nice. And uh, yeah, he was nice. And I was given the job of making the. Did you hear that? It's Andre do the machine gun sneeze. Oh, he's now run out of the room. The... I didn't... I think I used to mix the pastry. And you know, one of those big mixers. And it kind of grew. The, the job I had, first of all, when I was there, was just cleaning the trays and greasing the trays and sweeping up and and then I kind of you know moving stuff around you know a lot of the lugging and the hard the physical stuff and then as I got a bit more experienced and uh, gained gained some trust um, I was allowed to break eggs that might sound like a a simple thing, but this wasn't just like one or two eggs. This was, you know, hundreds of eggs. Or maybe not hundreds, but, you know, maybe 60 or 80 eggs or maybe, maybe 100. But I learned to do it. And I could break two eggs at a time, one in each hand. And I loved it. Absolutely, it was one of my favourite things ever. It was, is it took, I'll give you an example of how much I loved it. I was working with another young, another bloke, or a kid my age, and he said, uh, Jason, I said, what Tom? He said, uh, guess what? I said, what? He said, I found this underneath my granddad's bed and I said what I thought he was going to show me some socks or something and it, it was a nudie magazine it was a magazine full of nude women he said do you want to have a look I said no thanks I've got eggs to crack see I was very focused on the eggs so I would really I quite like the idea of being able to do two eggs at a time. And the novelty never really wore off. I'm thinking about it now and I'm getting a little bit nostalgic for those egg breaking days. And then, I'm not sure, I think it was just we pour it into the mixer and maybe sometimes I'd have to whisk it up, I don't remember. So they'd be making all kinds of bread, you know, breads, basic different types of bread, sticks, bread, rolls, bread, uh, baps, uh, you know, just what any any baker would would do. And they made cakes as well and oh the cakes were beautiful. And everything was made. It was no, nothing was frozen. It was all made from scratch. You know, there was no. There were no frozen cakes put in the oven. It was all made. And the. What is it? Oh yeah, I. They would give. I think I got to the point where I could actually roll the donuts so I was allowed to actually roll them into balls and then put them on a tray and then take them down and fry them and then once they're fried you know I had to let them cool off uh, and then 
I would fill them with jam. And then I'd put them again, they'd have to be sprinkled in, well, rolled around in a, like a big tub of sugar. These were the, the filled donuts, obviously. You, you got donut holes as well, or donuts with holes, rather. And what I used to do is, I got in trouble for this, but I used to put, instead of just one squeeze of jam, so it used to be this, it used to be on the side of the counter, uh, like there was a kitchen, what well, it was a kitchen, big just like any kitchen really, big metal table in the middle uh, where everything was kind of prepared and on the side there was this jam thing which you basically just pull down the lever and the, the jam squirted inside the, it had a nozzle and it squirted into the uh, the thing the donut and what I like to do is instead of just putting one squeeze I try and do three squeezes because well I do that and no one really knew I've for me, it's partly because I thought, I want to be generous. You know, I want to live a good life. I want to be generous. I want to be kind. And I want to start off my life in this way. It's my first job, really, you know, kind of, apart from uh, not dressing gowns. Um, paper, paper rounds. It rhymes, doesn't it, with dressing gown. Paper rounds. And... I thought I want to kind of start as I need to move onwards because in the future when I'm helping people with hypnosis and making podcasts and that you know I want to sort of start this now so I thought I'd be generous and kind and giving and also when I finished my shift I'd sit outside and I'd watch the customers that just bought the donuts eating them and getting covered in jam as a jam squirted everywhere because they were too full of jam so I got in trouble for that I didn't really get in trouble I mean I didn't didn't get a criminal record for it or anything but it's apparently jam's expensive I, I didn't know that I remember they said to me, said, you know what? I said, what, what? I said, jam's expensive. I said, oh, I didn't know that. And they said, yeah. They said, it doesn't grow on trees, you know. What, well, this apple jam doesn't grow on trees? Okay. It's not made on trees, is it? It's, you know, the the manufacturing process. Because an apple falling on the floor is not the same as a jar of jam. It's not the same. It's, you could say, oh, it's the same product. It's got apples in it. It's got apples and pears. I said, yeah, but it's jam. It's a very different product. But it's got apples in it, apples and pears. So yeah, but why do you keep repeating that? It's got apples in it, apples and pears. What the heck are you going on about? It? Why do you keep repeating that? Because it's oh, okay. I've stopped. Apples and pears. See. Sitting in the tree. Uh, 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 uh. So 
So I like the idea of these recordings being some place where you can, like a safe place where you can just relax your mind. And I believe, given the correct circumstances, the correct environment, the correct space, that our minds can heal and that our bodies can heal. After all, it's our minds that heal our bodies. So given the right space, that safe space to relax, to let go, that miraculous things can happen. Or maybe they're not miraculous, maybe they're just natural things. Because those things that we would class as miraculous are those things that we really, really want. But it's no more miraculous than the normal things like digesting our food. Thanks, Andre. Yeah, again, for disturbing me. I think it would be actually quieter if I got a parrot. I'll get rid of him and get a parrot. And the worst case scenario is the parrot copies me and starts saying, Yeah, sure, I'm sleeping. And start chatting crap or rubbish and I can just let the parrot do the recording. Unless they just repeat everything I said. Said. He's purposely making noise. He wants my attention. Now he's about to bite my ankle. Because he thinks somehow by biting me, I'll feel kindly and when I give him some food. And it's strange. Now he's biting my hand now. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It makes me want to give you and give you all the things in the world when you bite me. I get so full of love for you. Yes, I do. Yes, I love it. Yeah, now hurt me some more. Yeah, there's big teethies of yours. Yeah, you silly Billy. Oh, well, thank you for those of you that have written testimonials or that on my website if you do like what I do if you go to my letmeboyyoutosleep.com you can leave a testimonial saying hey hey Jay thanks man yay Thanks for boring me to sleep. Yay. So yeah, I went to the gym today. There was a punch bag there. I knew, I was saying it like I was surprised. There, I knew there was a punch bag there, which is... Uh, one of the it's kind of the clincher for me not clencher but clincher not like a buttock clincher but a kind of a yay I like that not that there's anything wrong with clenching your buttocks but this gym 
it has it's got a few it, this yeah it's very top heavy with running machines which I'm not in like cross not cross dresses what are they called cross you know the machines that exercise your legs and your arms not cross dresses but cross something else I don't I don't really want either of those you know really I might do the running machine eventually but I'm more interested in just taking it slowly you know for now so there's it's not a big gym but it's it's local so that's good and so I went there I spent the first 10 minutes on the punch bag I can honestly say after 10 minutes I looked at the clock thinking that it would be a lot later than what it was but nope I'd only been doing it for 10 minutes and so I went into the the part where the machines are and there was a woman doing yoga taking up pretty much the whole of this floor space <laughs> the, it's like okay yeah cool you know it's like, so I, I started working on one of the machines and then I started working my way up and she packed a a, a yoga sack or whatever it is a yogurini um, mat and left but I was quite surprised it's like it's like how am I going to do the machines because there was at least three machines I couldn't get to because of her stretching out which makes me think how do they do yoga there because there's actually there's a yoga class where unless they've got I mean there's a swimming pool maybe they've got some kind of floating yoga mats that they that they use water yoga possibly maybe it is a thing you've got sweaty yoga haven't you the one where everyone gets really hot and sweaty they do it in a I think it's like a sauna room or something see I thought that would be smelly and I thought also it would be a little bit uncomfortable and you know but then I thought actually sweaty yoga hot and sweaty would probably be quite good for me because if you're stretching and all your ligaments and legs and stuff are all really warm then it would be probably much easier to stretch than it may be if it was colder so I don't know but what machine should I use oh I did a thigh machine which is actually for your hips and so it's basically you put your legs either side of this machine and it pushes your legs out and you just have to pull push your legs together which is to strengthen the hips so I did that one did three sets of ten a very low weight I had to do I did low weights on everything um, and then 
the next machine was I can't remember what the next one was but there's yeah there was a machine where the triceps were just pushing down then it was uh, changed it around so it became barbells you know a bit like a bicep training and there was another one for shoulders and chest so I did those so I think I used about four machines maybe five and then I went back and used a punch bag for another 10 minutes or so and then I left and then I came home and when I got home I actually felt quite good and that's the end of that story see you next time Bye.